sometimes it's difficult to realize that well-known musicians weren't always famous. Today, the Commodores are recognized as one of the most legendary Motown acts, but William King says during their early days at the label, they were the low men on the totem pole. It wasn't unusual to receive a call telling them their studio time had been given to a more established artist like Marvin Gaye. After years of hard work, the Commodores have made a name for themselves and can look back on their early career with no regrets. Now, since we've sold more records than, than any of them have now, I feel real good about it. <laughs> so, it's kind of like, nah, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, but those were a lot of good years. The Commodores formed when King's college band, The Mystics, merged with another group on campus called The Jays. While the merger brought stability to The Mystics' rotating roster, creating a new name for the band proved challenging. That all changed when the musicians chose to leave the decision to fate, or more precisely, to King's Finger. Some of the guys wanted to name the group after themselves. And uh, we had like, like Marlon Williams and the Hubcaps, and, uh, you know, William King and the Whatnots. And uh, so, 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 you know, the Whatnots and the Hubcaps didn't like that too much. <laughs> so we decided, look, uh, we'll we choose a name out of the dictionary. So they blindfolded me and gave me a dictionary, and I just flipped it open, and I put my finger on a word, and that word was uh, Commodores. And we said, whatever that word was, we would call the name, that would be the name of the group. And so that's what we did. And it, it could have been Commode, but it turned out to be Commodores, and that's how we got the name of the group. The group has lost some members over the years, but the Commodores have existed in one form or another for about four decades. During that time, King has witnessed changes to the music scene. He says one of the biggest differences he's noticed is today's music focuses on the beat and the song's melody is not as important as it used to be. Most of those songs, you can't even take the, 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 the melody, the vocal melody, off and sing it because it's, it's not melodic. It's just, it's just notes that fit that chord as opposed to like you're once, twice, three times a lady. Now, you don't even need music to sing that. You know, it's, you can just sing the melody. And, uh, and a lot of the music today is, isn't that way. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just a lot of stuff going on. And, and that's what the kids want. They like that freedom. They like to be able to just go for it. And um, I get that. But at the same time, I think there's nothing like a great melody line so that you can always take it with you. I mean, when you're 75 years old, you, you, you're still going to remember the song Breakout Zone. You're still going to remember Three Times a Lady, Easy, a Sell On, and you're going to be able to sing those. King says the Commodores packed their shows full of fans' favorite tunes. With listeners worldwide, the popularity of a song can vary from place to place. An early track called The Bump, for example, was a hit in Asia. When a fan recently requested the band play that song, King learned the downside of having created 40 years' worth of music. It was on our very first album. It was written by Marlon Williams, who, by the way, wrote our very first hit, which was Machine Gun. And uh, it was kind of like, do the bump, do the bump, baby, do the bump, do the bump, baby. That, it, that was kind of like the melody line. And uh, somebody asked, and I had to sit there and go, you know what, I don't even remember the changes to that song. You know, and uh, I, it made me feel kind of sad. But, you know, this was back in 1970. That song was written like in 72 or 73. Okay, so... That's a long time to remember that one song. And, uh, and that's just not one. I mean, there were many, many, many songs uh, doing all of those albums, God Almighty. And for us to just pick up the instruments and just play them all without thinking about it, it's too, it, it, we can't do it. Although they've written several songs already, the Commodores are looking to increase that number now that they are working on a brand new album. In addition to recording, the group is still on tour, and like many other bands missing some of its original members, the Commodores have to deal with reunion rumors. King says the only former member who hasn't agreed to a reunion is Lionel Richie. The funny thing is, he's usually the person who starts the rumors. I got a call from a friend of mine said, I just saw on ABC News, y'all getting back together again. I said, well, I said when? <laughs> and he said, what are you talking about when? Don't you know? I said, no. I, this is the first I've heard of it. So, you know, once he says it, the news picks it up, and then everybody hears it. And we're usually on the road traveling, so we don't get a chance to hear it. And then, you know, someone will say, what about it? And we go, uh, I don't know anything about it. For now, it looks as though the Commodores will continue performing as a trio. 
One of their upcoming concerts will be right here in Fayetteville at the Walton Arts Center. However, this won't be King's first visit to the area. He says many years ago, he participated in a celebrity tennis tournament hosted by Sam Walton. Following the event, King had the opportunity to chat with the businessman. We just sat in a room for about an hour and a half and talked about business. And, um, and that was great. It was a great learning experience for me, and he was just so wonderful to be around. He was just so, so nice and so um, real, and uh, I, we just had a great time. The April 7th performance at the Walton Arts Center is part of the Washington Regional Foundation's annual gala. Proceeds from the event will help purchase equipment for emergency department trauma rooms. Reporting for the Morning News, I'm Antoinette Grajeda.